Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. For those of you who don't know or are tuning in for the first time, we take your questions that you submit to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. We put them on a screen that are right up here in front of us, and you get a real true spontaneous response because these questions have not been view- previewed. Correct. Which right. is the way I like it. I don't really like to see the questions in advance anyway. Right. Well, it's less spontaneous then. Too true. And it's rehearsed. Then it turns into a Thursday deep dive. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> With slides and everything. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so Ron R. Happens. asks, concerning bank bail-ins, are shares of individual stocks at risk? In your opinion, would the stock value be sold and or taken by the brokerage company or the government? Well, that's an interesting question because when we're looking at bail-ins, what they're doing is if they take your, if, if the bank needs to be bailed in, they're going to take whatever deposits you have, your the equity in your account, and turn it into new stock shares in the failing bank. So um, that's really actually an interesting question because let's say, I mean, the likelihood of JP Morgan going belly up is probably pretty slim because they would be considered systemically important, mm-hmm. but they certainly <clears throat> already issue shares. My bet would be, as I'm just kind of thinking it through, and we'll find out what the truth is, but I would think they would issue special pur- purchase uh, purpose stock shares that are separate if the bank already has stock shares already listed on the exchange. Because that would be a problem if they went to commingle those. But my bet would also be that those shares of stock would be in the toilet anyway at that point because the bank is failing, whether it's any bank. I, I think the I think maybe you read the I read the question differently. Okay. How I did think, you read it? I read it as so um and it's good because then we'll get both but, answers. Exactly, right? exactly. But I read it as um what about like you know, just shares of stocks that I have in Coca-Cola and Walmart and like in my 401k portfolio, are those like with bank bail-ins, are those at risk? And if that <laughs> if that were actually the way that they were answering the question, so not these specific bank stocks, but stocks in general, if it's a small bank that's going out and needing to ba- be bailed in, uh, that that likely wouldn't have as much, put as much pressure on the stock market as a whole. If it's a larger bank that's going to be bailed in, well, then, you know, I would think that you would see a lot of volatility and and potential implosion in the stock market. But if it's a small bank, probably not have a broader impact or not as great a broader impact unless it was part of a domino. So I think it kind of depends, but in my opinion, when the stock value be sold or taken by the brokerage company or the government, you know, essentially if it's a, if it's on the first way that I answered, if if it's a bank that's failing and they issue special purpose, shares to take your equity and bail that equity into the bank, I mean, how much value does that have anyway? Because it's a failing institution. So I don't think that the, um, I'm not sure what you mean by the stock value to be sold, but I would say that the stock value is probably pretty low. I think he's thinking this person's asking bank bail-ins, meaning like, are stocks bail inable? Stocks are bail inable because they're hypothecated and rehypothecated, even going to a broader level. So, um, and th- I think there there goes back to the difference between a small bank or a systemically important bank. Because if it is a systemically important bank that's needing to be bailed in, that's likely a Lehman moment or something like that, mm-hmm. and that would be right across the board you would see the stock market implode. I mean, I was there on Black Monday in 1987. And when you're in a major implosion, there is nothing 
as far as stocks are concerned, there is nothing that is safe, right? Everything is going to implode at, you know, whether you think that it's a super safe stock or it's not a super safe stock, you're going to see everything implode and it will be a broad base. Um, if it's just one little bank, then yeah, they may, may or may not have shares out there, but I would think that they would create special purpose. To answer it a different way, okay, because I'm thinking of it, I think we're not on the same page as far as what and they're okay. what they're Ron, asking. But it's always up other? to interpretation, right? right? Absolutely. So I think he's and I asking think it's good. <laughs> about about what you did the presentation on with the Yale Law Study, where uh -huh. you know the if you own stocks in a brokerage company, that you're actually the beneficial owner under many layers of other beneficial owners. So you're not right. actually technically the real, real. owner you're not of the that stock. You're the legal owner. You're the beneficial owner. Right. And in a court of law, they only recognize the legal owner, which is Seed & Company. Right. Right? They're they're the <clears throat> legal owners of any shares of stock, but but you know, again, either either way, that goes back to hypothecation and hypothecation for those that haven't been following this for a while is the, when you make a deposit into a bank, whether it's in a checking account or a savings account, the bank has the right to sweep those funds into sub accounts and then use that equity for their benefit, right? So then they use that equity as collateral and they go out and they borrow and whoever gets that your equity as collateral has the right to use that same equity and go out and borrow more. And um, if, if most of those uh, contracts are done in the city of London, which means that there's no limitations as far as how many times that same equity can be used. So that's rehypothecation right? Hypothecation is using that equity. Rehypothecation <laughs> is using it over and over and over again. So in that case, that would also most likely be a major bank that was needing to be bailed in. And yeah, that would have an absolute uh, impact on the entire market. Because if you think back to what happened but in they 2008. They're not going to bail in your stocks per se. No, they're bailing, they're going to bail in your checking or your savings account. Right. But they're not going to bail in your stock portfolio. Correct. They will just give you stocks that in the failing institution that have, you know, basically no value. But they're going to put a value on them. That's eminent domain. They they can take it, but they have to pay you fair value. But who determines that fair value? Oh, the failing bank. All right, so do you think Social Security and federal retirement will go away? I don't think so because they like you to volunteer. The problem is, is that what they pay you in, which is the fiat money, will have no value. So that's really more the problem. Do I think that they're, they're going to threaten Social Security because that's what they always do and the retirement, they threaten it so that you go, oh, no, no, no. But, you know, there are many different ways to take Social Security, take any of your wealth away, any of your retirement wealth or current wealth. It's just that it's all denominated in dollars that, as we sit here and speak, are rapidly losing value. And you know that regardless of what anybody says, because when you go to the store to buy anything, it costs you more and more and more. And it's not that that thing is worth that much more money. It's that the currency's value, purchasing power value, is that much less. So, yeah, I mean, why would they actually take Social Security or federal retirement away? Because then they get backlash. Then people scream and yell and it disrupts the elections and everything else. They don't want that. They'll just give you money but you won't be able to do anything with it. And so, yeah, they're going to go right. away. That's why you got to have, that's why you got to have physical gold, silver in your possession. And I think my chopstick just fell in the trash can. Yes, it did. Excuse me. All right. So, Ann B asks, we are trying to close out or cash out our 401k and ah. the company will not let us. Why? And what can we do? Now we've, 
we get we get this question, you know, regularly. So right. And I know you've helped people with this, so I, I thought, let's ask this question. I don't think we've asked it on air before, so. Okay, and I think that's really important. So <laughs> number one, if you are currently working at the company and you are currently contributing, understand that all of these things that are created, because they started creating IRAs in the 70s and the 401ks in the, in the 80s, and they were really transferring risk, but these people, there's a whole string of them that get paid for assets in-house. And when I was a new stockbroker, that's what they wanted you to do, was gather assets. And, and if you listen to the talking heads, that's what they really are talking about as well now, that you know fund managers are really asset gatherers <laughs> because they get ongoing fees to have that held in-house, right? So whose benefit is it really in? But if you are currently still working at the company and contributing or not contributing, but if you're still working at that company, if you read the prospectus in the fine print, then, you know, typically you may be allowed to borrow against it, but but every, every uh, document could be different. So there's no blanket area for this. But if you are uh, still working there, you might be able to do, ask them if you can do this, it's, and I'll repeat it, write this down, so grab a pencil and write this down. In service withdrawal, roll over election. I'll repeat it. In service withdrawal, roll over election. So in service means you're still working there, and you may or may not be able to do it, depends on how your documents are written. But if you have the ability to do an in-service withdrawal rollover election, then uh, then typically, I mean, I haven't looked at them in a while, so this could change a little bit, but you could roll out 50,000 or 50% of whatever you're holding in your 401k, whichever is lower, whichever is lower, you can roll that into a traditional IRA. And from there, if you want to take a distribution, you could take a distribution. You'll pay your taxes, you'll pay your penalties, but you'll have access to that money. You might also be able to borrow against it. And then typically you have a five year period to pay yourself back. So that is another way to give you access Potentially, you have to see if you can do it. And, it, and it's, there's no blanket answer on that. You have to call the administrator or look at your documentation that sets up the 401k. But yeah, they're not going to let you just pull it out if you're currently contributing. Now, if you're no longer working at the company, then you would have the right to take the distribution or roll it over into an IRA, some kind of IRA, a Roth IRA you're going to pay your taxes on, and then in theory you won't pay taxes on any of the gains. Um, but I used to have a SEP IRA. I do not have any of that anymore because I like to hold my retirement money, and there's a whole strategy on how to do that. Uh, but I like to hold my retirement money so that I have access to it. I don't really want anybody to oversee it. So, um, yeah, the reason is, is because they're making money on your money, holding it in there, and they want you to keep it in there so they can continuously make fees on it. And you can either do a rollover election, as long as you're allowed, a roll uh, in-service withdrawal, rollover election, or borrow against it. Or, you know, I mean, I'm not telling you to do this, but I've had some people that have actually quit the company because they had so much money in there and they were so nervous and they were very close to retirement anyway, make the choice so that they could take the distribution. I'm not telling you to do that. You've got to do whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just telling you, I do know people that have definitely made that choice. Yeah, and if, you, if you're in the situation where you don't work for the company anymore and you are trying to get your money out, sometimes you have to fight for it. Oh, yeah. They're not going to make it easy. They're going to make it really complicated. And even the people that you talk to, the administrators, you know, they may be low level and not really understand 
all the nuances of your contract. So, you know, I mean, I used to read them for people. I don't do that anymore, and I don't have time to do that anymore. But I used to actually, you know, a lot of times they're online, and then there are some keywords, and maybe we can put a little keyword list and share it with our consultants um, so that if you call in, if you don't have a strategy anyway, you need to click Calendly and get that strategy. So I don't know, maybe we can come up with some keywords and... and uh, You're the expert. Yeah. You've dealt with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. Uh, Edgar, I want you to remind me to do that, please. Uh, and we'll come up key with keywords and then and I'll share them with the consultants and then they can share them with you. Uh, so you want the link to all of your, uh, the administrator's documentation and prospectus on, on your 401k. And then you'll have some keywords to look for to tell you what to do. All right, so Demented Uncle asks, why hasn't the CFTC forced JP Morgan out of as custodian of the COMEX? Because they're just too big and they're just too powerful. And why in the world do you think that the CFTC or the SEC or any of the other alphabet soup, um, you know, that question means that you think that they're supposed to be enforcing things for the public benefit. And that's not really what any of these agencies are about. So, um, you know, there's only a few bullion banks in the world, JP Morgan being one, and JP Morgan makes hundreds of thousands of dollars off of trading non-physical gold contracts, the derivatives. And, um, and they make millions of dollars trading and custodying, uh, holding uh, custody of the physical metal, which for GLD, SLV, you know, they're the ones that have access to the underlying metal. But yeah, the CFTC is not about enforcing anything for public good. Neither is the SEC. So that's why. JP Morgan is just too big. They're too powerful. And they have their fingers in too many places, likely including the CFTC and the SEC. But I'm not saying that. It's a possibility. I'll just say that, probability even. Lisa J asks, what will be the trigger to tip this balance and start the avalanche of dumping dollars? Oh, that, that's a really good question. There's going to be a, there's going to be, I mean, we are the best horse in the glue factory, maybe, uh, because we have more resources and we're more independent than, say, the Eurozone, who's highly dependent upon, you know, energy outside their borders. So I, I don't know what that trigger is going to be, but I do believe that we will be seeing another Lehman-type event, a big black swan event that nobody is anticipating, which is why it's a black swan. Nobody really knows. It could come in a number of different areas. Uh, dumping dollars right now, what I think is really interesting is that, you know, traditionally, well, short-term tradition, long-term tradition, gold is the only safe asset. That's thousands and thousands of years. But in a hundred year time frame, the dollar still retains its title as the world reserve currency and a safe asset. Um, and so if people like in the Eurozone are concerned about what's going there, then they're selling Euros and they're buying dollars. If they're concerned about something in Japan, they're selling the yen and they're buying dollars. So what we're hearing is this strong dollar, but at the same time, you know, it's losing purchasing power, maybe not as quickly as some other places, but certainly very, very quickly. I, I don't know what the trigger is going to be. I'm sorry. It's, it's, but there is a fine balance here and it is about the confidence and it is about the loss of confidence. So as long as people still have confidence in the dollar, then they're going to foolishly fly to the perceived safety of the dollar and if dumping into what other assets, and that's really where the gold and the silver come in,
because much as people will attempt, as we go into this hyperinflation, what we see is that the stock market also hyperinflates. But that's from people trying to get out of dollars into something that they think is better than those dollars, except those are denominated in dollars. So it's kind of out of the frying pan into the, into the fire. What we're going to see is people remembering that gold and silver are real money and real assets. And they will, the smart ones are already accumulating because the availability and the premium between it. You know, I, I did an interview, which will be out on Tuesday with uh, Chris Martinson yesterday, and it was a really great interview. His channel or ours? Uh, our channel. Okay. So it's a, it's a coffee with Lynette, and I really had a really good time with him. I really respect him a lot, and I've been following his work for a number of years. And, you know, we were talking about the safe flight to safety and all of that. You know, you have to understand that even though we've been trained away from gold, primarily, you know, since 1933, when they, they want us to think of it as garbage, the reality is, is that it's in our DNA. And if you look at the countries that are going through hyperinflation, like Zimbabwe, like uh, Venezuela, who is actually using gold for direct purchases, and the same thing in Zimbabwe, the young and the old are the ones that suffer the most. The able bodies went out and panned for gold so that they could buy their food. And hey, Zimbabwe just came out with a one ounce gold coin. So, and what's that about? How many Zimbabweans can actually afford one ounce of gold now? So you gotta get it while you can, and you have to get it while it's being so suppressed because the availability to get it when there is that flight to safety, you know, I mean, you'll probably still be able to get it, but the premium that you're gonna have to pay in order to get it is going to be, in my opinion, substantially higher than it is right now. So when they're ready to dump those dollars, you know, yeah, some's going to go into the stock market for that perceived safety, but the smart money will go into physical gold and silver, which is actually what's happening now too, right? The smart money is doing what the smart money does, which is recognizing an undervalued asset that's in a long-term positive trend, tell me what other asset besides gold and silver can actually make that statement and have it be true. Can you think of anything? That's in a long-term positive that trend that's undervalued? Correct. No. Tell me what's in a long-term positive trend other than gold and silver. Stock market. Is it but really? it's overvalued. Yeah. severely overvalued and yeah. it's extraordinarily volatile right now. So it's overvalued. Real, real estate's I would not been say. in a long-term positive and, trend, and, but it's overvalued. Yes. However, and this is the mistake that a lot of people actually make, and I'm going to stay with stocks for a minute. When you have stocks, what can you convert them into? Dollars. Right. Is the dollar in a long-term positive trend? So what's the real no, trend? The stock market hasn't even kept up with the dollar's decline. Too true. But aside from that, if the underlying value is in dollars and the purchasing power of dollars has clearly been in a long-term neg negative trend, that's the real trend. They can make things look nominally any way they want to because that's paper that's cheap and easy to trade. But you and I and and... I don't want to offend anybody, but if you're smart, you're going to look at what the real trend is and then make educated choices based on that. So anything that you can only convert into paper. And we were talking about real estate earlier. As long as you have the gold to be to give you the ability to pay off that mortgage at a moment's notice like that, all right, you've got some safety. But yeah, it's severely overvalued. So the only asset and the, and the real underlying trend is what's happening with the dollar and not the strong dollar against another currency, but the dollar's purchasing power. That's the real trend. Well, on that very sad note. <laughs> oh, oops.
Oops. It's time to end. Okay. It's time to end. Well, make sure that you watch yesterday's video on JP Morgan gold and debt. And then tomorrow's video is understanding. I'm trying to going to help you understand what that neutral interest rate is that the fed says that we are now at neutral in May. They didn't know where neutral was, but magically in July they do. Although that's in dispute. And I one of those that would dispute it. So that's tomorrow. And again, and if you, neutral meaning that they don't need to raise or lower it anymore. Correct. Okay. Because neutral <laughs> means that, that the rate is, is um, neither stimulative or contractionary. So, but well, the whole point was to be contractionary. Well, they front loaded, right? So just like, um, in other words, they're, the markets are really hoping that they are at neutral because if they're at neutral, which they're saying is now two and a quarter to two and a half percent interest rate, right? Well, but you've got inflation that's at like is officially running at 9.1%. Uh, so that means that two and a half percent, it needs to be at nine and 9.1% to be kind of neutral, even if you're buying that we only have 9.1% inflation. Right. Okay. So two and a half percent, which is the highest level that, that, that they've put in is not neutral. It's because if you were to buy a bond and it paid you two and a half percent and inflation is running at 9%, you're behind the, exactly. You're behind the eight ball, but the markets in a long-term negative trend, a long-term negative trend where you're actually paying them to loan them money, which makes absolutely for a while. Well, does it make it right? No, no, makes it, you know, so yeah, that's what, that's what I talk about uh, tomorrow because people may hear that term and think, but the markets like it because that means they're able to buy, <clears throat> to borrow money a lot cheaper. So it's, it's loose. It's keeping monetary policy very, very loose, not neutral. He's full of, and <laughs> okay. So if you like this content though, you need to subscribe so that you get this. We'll let you know if you hit that Did bell when we're going up. Did I make that up? Yeah. No, I didn't make that up. One of your family members make it up. Mm, I don't think so. No, no. You don't know what that means. I know what it means. <laughs> Do you know what that means? But I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from either, but I mean, I've used it for many years and I'm a oh, lot yes. older than you. Yes, you have. I know. I know exactly what you're, what you're doing. Yeah. If you guys know what that means or you don't know, what leave that it in means, the comments. Let me see if you know what that means. Right. What does this mean? <laughs> Let me know what you think. Now you know how I feel about the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Cause that's how I feel about them. Uh, however, if you haven't already established your strategy, just click that Calendly link below, book a time to talk to one of our consultants because you really need to have your strategy in place. And if you have already done that, but you haven't finished your strategy, get it done. What are you waiting for? But make sure you subscribe, hit that button. We'll let you know when we're going live, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up and share, 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 share. The more people that see this information, the more educated people are, the better off they're going to be because they're going to have the ability to make educated choices that, oh my goodness, what a concept puts your best interest first, which is exactly where it should be. So, you know, it is time to cover every bit of any assets that you have and please get it done quickly. Please, I don't know how much time we have before it becomes apparent to everybody, but we've got a window here. Take advantage of it. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye.